Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat. In today's video, we are going to revisit something we did in the past with our older controls, which is tool setup on a DPM milling machine. So what do you say we get started? Now for the most part, our tool setup is the same in any RMX product. However, because of the versatility of the DPM mills and you have the ability to move the head or the quill, it makes it very easy to do the tool setup by just using the quill. The advantage, of course, is the fact that because you have 23 inches of travel, you can actually set up tools that are long and short at the same time. And if I have to move the head, it's still going to know where it is when each tool touches its reference point. Now, it's important to know that with any RX product, we send out a little part here that uh, looks like a little plunger. I'm pointing it to it with my finger right here. It's just a 3 8 shank with a half inch diameter stud. And you don't have to use this. You could use anything as your reference. The important thing is whatever you use, you use it all the time, okay? Uh, in some of the previous videos, older controls and stuff, we used to use the ring from the bottom of the spindle or just an empty tool holder. It all works the same way. But since it comes with the control, what I would suggest you do is dedicate one tool holder, put it in there, lock it down, leave it there forever. Then you can always add and subtract tools and everything's gonna work all the time. Okay, I've got three tools here that need to be set up. This is our DPM RX3, but it's the same in any of the RX DPM models, okay? So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna put this in the quill here, okay? And I'm trying to stay out of the camera while I do all this stuff, so. So that's in my quill. If you look over here on the control, I've just got a simple program in here. And if I go to the beginning, it's got a rectangular pocket. It's got a rectangular profile. It's got some holes drilled in it. So basically it uses three tools. And so what happens when you're gonna do the tool setup in the very beginning is once I get done making my program, if I go to the tool table, you're gonna see there's two parts of the tool table. One of the things that makes the RX series so much nicer than the previous series is the fact that it keeps a tool library and I can have almost 100 tools in my library and then assign those individual tools to each program. But for right now, I'm just talking about tool setup. So you'll notice up here that my base tool says it's not set. You'll see there's three tools in my program which it knows nothing about. And that's the part we're gonna to describe to you today, okay? So I've got my base tool in here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is set that base tool. So you'll see up here where it says not set. If I touch that, it turns blue. It says, tell me about that tool. So when, what they're looking for is a reference position. That's all they really care about, okay? And the first thing I say I gotta do is I gotta jog my head a little bit. So let's just go down a little bit here. Just enough that I know I can reach it, okay? So remember, the machine knows where the head and the quill are at all times. So all I'm doing is using some light pressure from my hand, touching the back of the vise because it's solid. And then when I touch this button here and hit the set key, you'll notice that it turns green and says, now I know where my reference is that everything else is gonna come from. Now you got a couple choices here when you go into different length tools. You can jog the head up and down for each one to get them in and out. You can move the table over back and forth, whatever works best for you. Okay, but in this case, my first tool is actually my longest tool. So I'm gonna go back to jog. I'm just gonna raise it up a little bit. I'm gonna change this tool. And I'm gonna put my drill bit in here. Probably gonna to have to jog it back down, so just minus. Get it close enough that I know I can reach. Hit return. Okay, so my first tool is a drill bit. So if I go to the tool here, I'm just gonna tell it it's a drill. I can tell it what kind of material it is. I can tell it how many flutes it has. I can tell it the size. But the most important thing I wanna talk about today is how to set the length. So you'll notice now that if I touch this drill bit off the back of the vise, just like I did for the base tool and hit the set key, it has measured the difference in length. So that difference in length is the difference between the tip of that tool and the tip of your tool setter, okay? That's so all it is, all right? So now I can take that tool out. I'm gonna do the same process, jog it up a little. Get this out of here. Sometimes that happens, I hate it when it does. There we go, lock it enough. Next time I'll lock it tighter. My second tool is a half inch end mill. Jog it back down, hit return tell it about that tool. So this is a finished end mill. It's carbide, it's got three flutes, it's a half inch. And then again, when this tool touches the same exact spot, hit the set key, it measures the difference again. Each one of them from the base tool, right? Jog it up a little bit. 
Take it out. Jog it back down. Return. Okay. So I touched this last tool off. Doesn't really matter what order you do this stuff in, as long as you do it. It's three eighths in diameter this time. Touch it off in the same place, and now I've got all those tools set up. Now, I'm going to show you another way to do tool setup in a second, but I want to cover one in part that gets everybody confused. And this is the call that comes into the apps guys, the sales guys, and the customer service department. And here it is. Once I set my tools up, all I've done is give a reference from one tool length to the next so that when one of them touches part zero, all the tools will also know where that part zero is. And I think the place where people get confused is they know the first thing they're going to do is use tool number one. So they put tool number one in the machine. They crank it over here to the top of the part. They come down here with that tool number one and they touch the part on the top and they go to set their Z0 in the DRO mode. The problem with that is they put tool number one in here, but they never told the machine. Notice where my finger's pointing, it says tool number three. The last thing the machine was told was that we set up tool number three. So if I set my Z0 now and I have a different tool in there, all the tools are gonna be off. So all you wanna do is take your last tool before you take it out of the spindle, come into DRO, Z absolute zero, and you'll notice that no matter which tool I put in there, it's gonna know the difference. Now a good way to see that is just by leaving this tool in here again, if I bring it down here, and I change to a different tool like tool number one, notice that my Z axis is different now. So each tool knows what the difference in length is, therefore the head is going to move up or down to make up for the difference in tool length for each individual tool as we go. So hopefully that makes it a little easier, but I am gonna show you another method to do this, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my tool table here. And what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna take a second in between because I wanna go back for the whole process. And normally you can reset your reference anywhere you want to, but keep in mind that once you set a base reference, it's always going to say set unless the machine's been turned off, okay? So what I'm gonna do is instead of turning it off, I'm just gonna explain it a little bit differently. So I'm gonna go back into my jog here and I'm just gonna move the Z up. Okay, I'm take this tool out again. And I'm gonna put my reference back in here. The most important thing I'm teaching you is that whatever you decide to use for your tool reference for measurement, you use it all the time consistently. Therefore, I can put tools in my library, not use them for two weeks. And as long as they haven't been taken out of my tool holder, I can pull them back in and they're still gonna work and I can add another tool and so on and so forth. But in this case, I'm gonna use a tool setter to show this a little bit different. Now my tool setter is a two inch uh, tool setter with a dial indicator on it, okay? And it is magnetic, which helps a little bit. Makes it easier to get around here. So I'm gonna come back down with my Z axis. Okay, and what I'm going to do is even though the base is set right now, I'm going to reset it, okay? So what I mean by that is I'm gonna come down here and this time I'm gonna do it a little differently because I'm gonna come right down until I actually zero out my indicator. So hopefully you guys can see the indicator as I do this. Right there, okay? And all I'm gonna do is touch this again and say set. Notice the control says, hey, resetting your base tool after the existing Z offsets, do you sure you wanna do that? Are you sure you wanna do that? Because it's gonna make whatever I do now not match tools that I did previously. So that's why I'm telling you your reference point always has to be the same. So in our case, I would either always use the back of the vise or always use the tool setter or always use a one, two, three block. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent, right? But in this case, I'm gonna say, yes, I re wanna reset that as a reference. So I don't have to turn it off to redo that. Just keep in mind, it looks the same both ways. So now when I come in here and I jog it up, you're actually going to find that these numbers are not really going to change because my reference between them are the same, right? But if I was to go through just one of them to give you an idea, <laughs> Let's just go to the drill bit because it's just as simple. 
Take a look at that number, 1.8875, right? So if I come down here now with this tool, I think I'll have enough room to touch it. And then bring this one to zero. And I retouch this tool, 18859. So I'm within about a thousandth of an inch, which may be just the difference of hand pressure compared to actually looking at an indicator, right? So realistically, it's the same process. One's probably a little bit more accurate than the other, but it should give you a really good idea on how to do it. Again, don't forget that there's other things in the tool changer um, and the tool page, I should say, that you can do. For instance, if I set up a tool like this, I can now add that tool to the library. I can do that with each individual tool so that once I've done these once, the next time I need to run them, they're already here. And in the RX, I can give them library numbers too, so that even if there's no program, I still can use those tools with their Z offsets to do manual work or things like that, and then later assign them to the next job that I do. So this should give you a much better idea and a better understanding of how to do the tool setup. As always, you know, we're here to help you if you still have some questions, but I hope this clears it up for a lot of you. Thanks a bunch for watching.